So, you guys ever come across an overwhelming challenge? Like something that, uh, that seemed to loom so big and so huge that it, it, it literally scared you to death. It's a rhetorical question, as I'm assuming the answer is yes. I'm sure everybody's had that. And at this point in the story, we find Israel is, is faced with that kind of overwhelming challenge. After 600 years of God's promise to Abraham to make him a great nation, the children of Israel are ready to advance into the promised land. But there's a big problem. The land is filled with very, very, very wicked people. Not to mention that there is a good number of, of physically, literally, giants. Now the children of Israel, though, they're under a new leader, Joshua. And they are at Kadesh Barnea, where 40 years earlier, Remember from last week, they took a horrible wrong turn. But God tells this new generation under Joshua that it's time to just get in there and take that land. And at the beginning of the book of Joshua, Joshua is told by God four times to be strong and courageous. See, now is the time for courage. Now, for the most part, every week when we, when we go through each chapter of the story, I, I give a pretty decent overview uh, of, of what happens. Well, this is one of those weeks where I hope everybody read chapter 7, because I'm not going to do that today. There's something I'm going to touch on, and we're pretty much going to stay right there, and we're not going to talk about a lot of the details that are found in, in this portion of the story. So, if you thought you could just get away with not reading it every week and be up to speed. The answer to that is no. -uh. <laughs> so you're going to want to read chapter 7 and chapter 8 for next week, if that's the case. Be strong and courageous. God wasn't just giving Joshua a pep talk, and then that's the end of it. You know, like, all right, be strong and courageous, everybody, now go get them. There was more to it than that. God gave Joshua three things that they should do in order to be successful. Three keys to victory. And that's what we're going to spend time talking about today. First of all, be people of the book. Before the death of Moses, one of the things he did was to write the Pentateuch a.k.a. the books of the law, first five chapters of the Old Testament. And in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, it's recorded that Moses gave those five books to the sons of Levi, the priests of the nation of Israel. They were instructed to read the law to the people every seven years. Now, I know there's probably somebody out there going, oh, wait a minute. So, Moses recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, that he gave the book of Deuteronomy to the priests? Well, Moses is given credit for reading or for writing the book of Deuteronomy, but in all actuality, he probably wrote 90% of that book and then died. <coughs> and Joshua probably had to finish up the very loose ends of the details of the end of Deuteronomy. So that's how that's possible. I just want to touch on that real quick. So they were instructed to read the law to those to the people every seven years, but God gave Moses or God gave Joshua a little bit more of a higher standard than that. It's found in the first chapter of Joshua, verses seven and eight. I'll read those now. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So Joshua was instructed to have God's word always on his lips. To meditate on it night and day, and to be very careful to make sure that he did each and everything that was found in that book. By adhering to these standards, Joshua would become a man of the book. And with their leader becoming a man of the book, the Israelites would become a people of the book. And by becoming a people of the book, they would become a people that had a guide for truth. They would become a people that had a way of identifying sin, and they would become a people that had a guideline by which to hold those accountable for sin. So it leads into the next thing that they would need in order to be successful. The second key to success, be people who identify with God. See, before the Israelites were going to head down into battle, God wanted all the males to identify themselves with God. In order to do so, they were going to have to be circumcised. You see, this is exactly what God had asked Moses to see to before he confronted Pharaoh back in Exodus. This was God's way of saying, before you head out there, I want, your, I want you to make your allegiance to me known. It's recorded in Joshua 5, 1 through 8. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before them, the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made them sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp, till they were whole. Now this is a constant notion throughout scriptures. Not this in particular. But it's the principle that is a constant. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us we're to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. In fact, Jesus even went so far as to confess that if any one of us are ashamed of him, that he would be ashamed of us at the judgment. So we saw, we've seen the first two things that they would need for success, the first two keys to victory. And the last one is that they need to be a people of prayer. They need to counsel with God. See, sometimes we Christians have a habit of plotting our own course, and once we get that course plotted, we stick to it. We don't vary from it. 
That's just what we do. And the reason we do that is because the plans that we create, they stem from our own human understanding, from, from our way of doing things. The problem with that is that our ways are not God's ways. And because of that, most times, it's real, real possible that God's plans are not going to be like our plans. That plan is revealed in Joshua 6, 2-5. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. So they're about to go down, and they're about to take Jericho, this big, huge walled city. Like, can you just imagine like, first of all, can, like, <laughs> who among the members of the Israelite army would have ever dreamed up a battle plan that involved putting a band together? Right? Like, that's probably not the first, that's, that's not their go-to idea. Like, how are we going to, man, that's a big wall around the city. Guys, I got it. We're just going to put a band together. It's cool. <laughs> That'll take care of it. That is not a plan that humans would come up with. That does not come from our understanding. And like poor Joseph, right? Can you, can you picture that? Here's Joseph coming down to guys that have been healing, grown men who have been healing for weeks after publicly showing their allegiance to God. And then Joshua comes down and he says, all right, guys, guys, first of all, I just want to say that y'all look great. Y'all look great. I know, it's been a, I know it's been a rough few weeks, but uh, you look great. You look like you're feeling great. And I think we're about ready to take that city. And I know everybody's amped up to do so. So I was talking to the Lord, and here's the plan. We're going to just going to walk around the city and not do anything. And then do that for six days. And the seventh day, though, is when things are, that, that's when action will be taken. Uh, I need seven priests that can play the trumpet. Like, I cannot even imagine having to go to those people and say that. I mean, in our heads, that's kind of a silly plan. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it could, it could be sillier, right? Like, guys, here's the plan. We're going to take honey, and we're going to cover our bodies with that, and then we're going to take a bunch of quail feathers and stick them all over, and then for six days, we're going to march around the city, and we're going to cluck like chickens, and then the last day, it's all going to fall down. Right? The fact is that it doesn't matter what the plan is. That part is irrelevant. What matters is that they follow that plan that was given to them by God. Right? I mean, that's the thing. It isn't enough to simply counsel with the Lord, but we have to be willing to follow that counsel, take that advice that's being given to us. And that's why he commanded, that's why he told him to carry the ark out in front of them. It was a symbol. It symbolized the fact that God was leading them. And that they were following God. And not the other way around. That they weren't taking the lead themselves. We have to be 
willing to follow God's lead. In the story, it spoke about them coming to the River Jordan and, and God damming up the river so that they could cross. But here's the thing. Like, that didn't happen until those priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant took that very first step into the water. It wasn't like Moses in the Red Sea where Moses was like, and the whole water just went like that. He was like, all right, let's do this. Like, they approached that river, and that river is raging. And nothing is happening. Nothing was going to happen until they took that first step. And here's the thing with the Jordan River. Like, here... So we went down to Port Stanley, right? Uh, not Joshua. This would be me and my family. And so I took my little girl out there to Port Sanilac, and Emily was like, I want to go in the water, Daddy. I want to go in the water, and I'm super protective, Daddy. And I was like, no. I don't know if sharks are out there or whatever's going on there. You, know, you might get swept away. Some typhoon come in. I don't know what's going to happen. You're my, you're my princess. You're not going out there. But the truth of the matter is, you know how you know how deep that is when you first step out there? Like this deep. Right? And then, oh, you walk a few feet, and it's like maybe this deep. And then, you know, it keeps going at a very gradual kind of pace. Well, here's the deal with the River Jordan. That didn't happen. The point that they crossed the River Jordan, it was a drop off. So when they were out there with that Ark of the Covenant, it wasn't like they just got to, okay, we step on the sand. Oh, look, the water's going away. No. They were at the shore, and they had to take a step. And that step was going to end in one of two ways. They were going to see the awesome, miraculous, real-life power of God, or they were going to see themselves dropping right into that water, swimming after that covenant, most likely somebody drowning, it was going to be a bad day for those couple of guys in the front of that thing. But they stepped out of faith. And as soon as their foot touched that water, God dammed up that river, and they crossed. We need to be willing to step out of faith. So Joshua and the Israelites were given these three keys to victory. And they followed. And by following God's instructions, the nation witnessed his mighty power when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. The army of Israel went straight into the city and they claimed victory in their first major campaign. See, so they continued to use these keys and they continued to claim victory after victory after victory. Now, I'm not saying that they won every battle because that is not how it worked. There was one battle they lost. They got the clocks cleaned in one battle. But coincidentally, it turned out that in the battle before then, somebody took it upon themselves to take a bunch of the spoils left behind and keep them for himself. It's not exactly being a, a people of the book. Not exactly following those, those keys to victory. And because of that, they lost the Battle of Ai. How's that for ironic? They lost the battle of I as soon as somebody started thinking for themselves. But these keys to victory, they don't only apply to Joshua in his day, back for his lower story. They also apply to us in our lower story. To this day, we're still called to teach the scriptures to every generation to be a people of the word of God. Proverbs 22.6 says, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to be a people of the word of God. Like Joshua and the Israelites, God, want, God wants us to identify with him. He does not want us to hide our allegiance under a basket hidden from sight. He requires us to be upfront with our faith in the public arena. Now guys, I got some real good news. Doing that is not circumcision these days. So, fellas, you relax. It's all good. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. We identify ourselves with God through the sacrament of baptism these days. Baptism is the Christian way of, of, of putting where, your money where your mouth is. That's, that's where, that's where our, our commitment to God, that's where the, the rubber meets the road. Right? It's the difference in, in, in kicking the tires on a vehicle and, and making that purchase. Getting behind the steering wheel in the driver's seat. I urge anybody here that's not baptized, you come talk to me about that. Let's get that taken care of. Let's at least have a conversation about it. And to this day, we are called to be a people of prayer. Ephesians 6.18 reads, Praying always, with all prayer and supplication. James 5, 16, the, effect, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If anybody wants to go away today with a little scripture memorization, I'm going to give you one right now, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. This one's easy. Ready? Pray without ceasing. This is what being a disciple of Christ is all about. We know that being a disciple of Christ can be rough sometimes. I guess it's not an easy thing to do. And as the numbers on the calendar get greater and greater and greater, we're going to find ourselves more and more opposition. John 15, 19 says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. It is what it is. And that's how it works. I used to be a DJ. That was, that was like my, you know, my, my, my reason for having a Facebook page, quite honestly. So I'd run karaoke in bars, and, you know, some, some, somebody who's just celebrating way too much would come up, ask me to play a song or something like that, and I'd look down, and it's already in my list, it's coming up in like three songs. I'm like, yeah, you know, let me see what I can do. And then their song comes up, and they're like, that's awesome! It's, that DJ, he, he made my day. I'm going to have a friend request. Of course, I accept it. Why? Because if I'm the cool DJ, the one night while they were all drunk, played a song they wanted to hear, they might hire me to do their wedding someday. So I got this massive Facebook, you know, list of friends. And the truth is, the more 
them to, to find out what it is that I'm doing these days, I've noticed that my friends list has started to dwindle in numbers. The people are just dropping off. They're unfriending me. <gasps> oh no. A little commentary on how I feel about Facebook, in case you didn't read through the lines there. So it's a challenge to be a follower of Christ. So what? Be strong and courageous. That's what. Be strong and courageous. Because we are all destined to have these mighty walls that we're going to have to face and that we're going to have to overcome. The same walls that separate us from where we are to where God wants us to be. That can be pretty intimidating sometimes. So be strong and courageous. Be people of the book. Get your nose in that word of God. Keep your nose in that word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Be a people that identify with God. Publicly. Profess your allegiance with Christ. Be a people of prayer. Constant, fervent, Spirit-filled prayer. Embrace those keys to success that we're given. And it doesn't matter how big that wall is. It will come crumbling down. And you will move forward in victory.